You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. Live from the Civic Media World Headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin, it's the Todd Alba Show. And now, pursuing truth wherever it may lead, here's your host, Todd Alba. Across Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network and streaming worldwide on the Civic Media app. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Todd Alba, along with our outstanding producer, Mr. Aaron Zomers, on the board, a TGIF edition. It is Friday, October 4th, 2024. It is a great day to be a Wisconsinite. Six minutes past the hour of 12 noon, high atop State Street, a block off the Capitol Square. It is picture perfect today, just like it was yesterday in Ripon, Wisconsin, when we were there to cover Vice President Kamala Harris's visit, along with former Congresswoman Republican Liz Cheney. Boy, howdy, what an event. We're going to get an all into all of that in just a minute. The voice, by the way, I'm not sure if it was being outside all day, but I think it's the fall allergies, Mr. Zomers. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I know it? they've been yeah. hitting me pretty bad. Uh, yeah, one of those one of those things. Huge show today. Uh, coming up a little bit later this hour, we have uh, Brady Ewing, former Wisconsin football player, a three-time Big Ten champion, was the captain of the team for a season, along with Russell Wilson and others. Also spent three years in the NFL. His brother, Brandon Ewing, the Ewing bros are back for another joint appearance talking football, hunting, and other matters. All Wisconsin. Enjoying that in the second half hour of this hour. Then in hour number two, our friend Mr. Sean Hannish joining us from Los Angeles, California to talk about just a bit outside the story of the 1982 Milwaukee Brewers. A quick update because there are new theaters opening in Wisconsin, Mr. Zomers. Yet again. Yet again, more theaters opening and uh, it's fantastic. And here's the thing. I will get into this later. The Brewers lost last night. It was sad, bad, not glad, as Ken Lewis, my former teacher, liked to say. We'll get into that later on. But here's the thing. And I think this, this is especially true as guys. We don't like to go to therapy. So here now, if you're a little discouraged, if you're feeling blue today, not blue and gold, but just blue over the brew crew is lost last night to the evil Mets. <laughs> Go to a theater because you can sit and be inspired and cry in the darkness and just say, it's not me. It's not, it's not me, man. It's the movie. It's the, you know what? Good idea. Right. You, you can get ther- Brewers therapy by going and seeing just a bit outside this weekend. Sean Hannish will join us and tell you where, how, and when later on in hour number two. And then at the bottom of the hour two, great, uh, looking forward to this, five times New York bestselling author Ian O'Connor with his new book called Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. Timely, timely indeed. Joining us now live from Los Angeles himself, the co-owner of the Green Bay Packers, the Green and Gold also happens to be the senior advisor for the Lincoln Project. And like myself, a former Republican, Trigby Olson, making an effort from the hotel room in, in L.A. Trigby, thanks for joining us. How are you, my friend? Good, man. I'm combining a little bit of work and play because I'm out here to uh, for some work stuff. And, yeah. and I'm going to catch the pack. Fantastic. I, I, I'm, I'm well, all my hats. I got all my hats <laughs> on, Todd. Uh, very quickly, have you been to SoFi before? The stadium. I've never been to so far. No. My I've, friends live. Amazing. Yeah, my friends who live out there have been. They say it's amazing. So uh, go pack, go, go get them. Trivi, last to get to. I want to get to it right away. And I appreciate you coming on today. You and I were texting a little bit uh, uh, last night. You and I both spent a lot of time in politics. You more so at the upper echelons of the Republican Party, working for people like John McCain. And I don't. You know, you, t- you tell your old own story. I got into it at twelve because I wanted a place to belong. And I felt like here's something that I'm inspired by. People like Ronald Reagan and Steve Gunderson. I haven't felt that way in a long time. I left the Republican Party in 2011. Last, late yesterday afternoon, standing in Ripon, Wisconsin, in a picturesque scene out of what could have been a movie on politics, Vice President Kamala Harris was on stage with former Republican Congressman, Congresswoman Liz Cheney. And Trigby, it was electric. And not because there was chance of, you know, we won't go back. We are whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
But this was a presidential speech of Liz Cheney talking about the, the dangers of Trumpism and why, even though she's still a conservative, she's voting for a Democrat for the first time. And Kamala Harris being extraordinarily gracious and deferential and praising Liz Cheney for her hero heroism, thanking her and her father, by the way, for their support. And Vice President Harris making the point, look, I'm going to be a, a president for all Americans because that's my constitutional duty and our constitution and democracy is larger than party. I felt like this is why I did it all these years, Trigby. Well, I mean, we've, we've reached a place where unfortunately for far too many, um, they're putting party ahead of being Americans first. And, um, you know, the, the win-win of our democracy is basically wrapping the genius of our founding fathers is that a group of guys came together in Philadelphia and they were all guys at that time. And it is what it is. It's just what it was then came together and they said, you know, power, somebody's going to hold power and you either don't hold power or you don't zero sum. But we're going to wrap that in a whole schoolhouse rock of win win. We're going to have regular elections. We're going to give people free speech. We're going to have, allow people to have the right to assembly. We're going to have regular elections. People are going to be able to peacefully transition power. And I think what was electric about that is you were actually seeing two people who are standing up there talking about the American experiment and what has, quite frankly, made America great for, dec for centuries. Mm -hmm. It's why other countries adopted that model. And the contrast with what Donald Trump was talking about and what Donald Trump's coalition looks like, quite frankly, is moving. And um, because I think it gives people hope. I, I couldn't agree more. I want to play a couple of these cuts, uh, particularly from uh, Congresswoman Cheney last night because yesterday afternoon it was in Ripon, Wisconsin. For those that might not know, Ripon, Wisconsin is the birthplace of the Republican Party, not just in the state of the country. And it was the Free Soilers, the Whigs, and some disaffected Democrats at the time who came together to, to, to appeal to our better angels for, for independent land rights, to, to help uh, abolish slavery. And, and we did the show yesterday out in front of the Little White Schoolhouse in Ripon. Again, many thanks to uh, the great folks at the Ripon Area Chamber of Commerce for letting us do that. Uh, Zomers, let's play the first clip here. Here is Liz Cheney in one of the most poignant moments yesterday in Ripon talking about the events of January 6th. It is Donald Trump's closest aides who also told us this. They said that while the attack on our Capitol was happening, Donald Trump was handed a note informing him that a civilian had been shot at the door to the chamber of the United States House of Representatives. Donald Trump put the note down on the table in front of him, continued to watch the attack on television, and still refused to tell the mob to leave the Capitol. Donald Trump was willing to sacrifice our Capitol to allow law enforcement officers to be beaten and brutalized in his name and to violate the law and the Constitution in order to seize power for himself. I don't care if you are a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. That is depravity, and we must never become numb to it. Liz Cheney, yesterday in Ripon. Trigby, sitting there amongst mostly Democrats, and I'm terrible at guesstimates, but I I'm going to say maybe including everybody at the venue, maybe it was uh, 3,000 people or so, and I think we lost Trigby for a second again. He'll come back on in just a second um, when he gets a connection. I'm back. All right, there we go. Um, and we appreciate yeah, you. I know, I know, Trigby, you're, you're making a, a, a great effort here to be on. I really appreciate it. Um, but I'm just saying that uh, having Liz Cheney tell that story yesterday in a, in a crowd of mostly, I'm going to guess somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 total people, the majority of which were Democrats. She got a, a standing ovation when she came out. Chance of thank you, Liz. She seemed a bit overwhelmed. And, yeah. and, and, and to stand there, and when she started telling these stories as someone who had seen all of the evidence of January 6th, both classified and unclassified, and told this story, she had the crowd in the palm of her hand. You could have heard a pin drop. This crowd took her seriously and appreciated what she was doing. Yeah, I think, you know... 
the, the, the moments, and I've seen this in my work around the world, the moments when you have people who are putting, putting, hey, I think maybe you froze just a second. Well, he'll be back in a second. Uh, again, listen. Ooh, sorry. All right, go ahead. I dropped, I dropped for a second. You know, becoming what Liz Cheney has become, she really is doing what John McCain talked about, which is a cause greater than self. Mm. She, you know, it's, it wasn't in her political self-interest to become what she's become, but it was the right thing to do. And I, people respect that. Yeah. And the reality is most of those people probably on, who are there, a lot of them, besides you, probably eh, wouldn't agree with Liz Cheney on a lot of politics mm. and a lot of policies, but they respect the fact that they all agree on what's most important, which is democracy. And if we don't have, if we don't have constitutional order, uh, we're not going to be having debates about tax rates or all kinds of other issues. And, um, and so I think that respect, you know, it's, it's just one of those unique things. People respect that. Zomers, we have time for the next one. Uh, she makes the ask. Here's uh, here is uh, Liz Cheney last night making the ask of the crowd in Ripon. In this election, a broad coalition has come together to support Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, we may disagree on some things, but we are bound together by the one thing that matters to us as Americans more than any other, and that's our duty to our Constitution and our belief in the miracle and the blessing of this incredible nation. We have a shared commitment, a shared commitment as Americans to ensuring that future generations live in a nation where power is transferred peacefully, where our leaders are men and women of good faith, and where our public servants set aside partisan battles to do what's right for this country. So today I ask all of you here and everyone listening across this great country to join us. I ask you to meet this moment. I ask you to stand in truth, to reject the depraved cruelty of Donald Trump. And I ask you instead to help us elect Kamala Harris for president. Liz Cheney yesterday in Ripple, Wisconsin. I got about uh, 30 seconds before the first break, Trey V. Again, your point, neither she nor Harris said we always are going to see eye to eye. But I thought that was a remarkable piece of, of, of audio there and speech from Liz Cheney. 100%. Come on back, talk more about this uh, remarkable event in Ripon, Wisconsin yesterday. Don't go anywhere. It's Trigby Olson in Los Angeles. It's Toddy here in Madison. All right here on the Civic Media Radio Network. The Title Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network now 21 past the hour of 12 noon on October 4th, 2024. Little Los Angeles music there for our friend, colleague, and ongoing contributor, senior advisor of the Lincoln Project, Mr. Trigby Olson, who joins us on our rare Friday appearance. We appreciate it so very much. Live from Los Angeles, California. We're going to go see the pack, do a little work out there as well. Trigby, how's LA treating you so far? You know, it's pretty good. You know, it's, that song has one of the best lines in it of any song. What is it? Big nasty redhead at my side. Rolling down the Imperial Highway. Big nasty redhead at my side. <laughs> so like, that good. is pretty fun. Randy <laughs> Newman. Randy Newman probably would not survive today given some of his songs. Right. would be very in, politically incorrect. But Randy Newman, that guy was a poet. So I, I feel like usually his songs were politically incorrect to prove a point of like, come on, just be a normal person. Or... Right. Yeah, not, I mean, not the right way. Come on, just respect other people. Right. Like, for right. example, the song Short People. a little bit like Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks' mm -hmm. movies took stuff to an extreme, right? Like mm -hmm. the whole um, producers, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, and I saw an interview once with Mel Brooks where he was basically saying, you know, what could be more insane than a bunch of people being like, we're going to round up a race and try and exterminate them. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he took it to the extremes. Yeah, I would say this, you know, for, for any of the Wisconsinites who might be headed out to the Packer game out here, I went to the Academy of Motion Pictures Museum yesterday. It is one of, and I've been to, a, yeah, I'm not bragging here, but I've been to a lot of museums around the world. That is one of the best museums I've ever been to. Wow. There you go. It's incredible. I, that is an incredible museum. I have not but, been, uh, but uh, thank you for the recommendation. Uh, I want to finish up this uh, quick conversation on uh, Vice yeah. President Harris and uh, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney being in Ripon yesterday. And we'll, we'll, we, our time is short here today. And yes, I, I want to get into some of the remarks from Vice President Harris because she was extraordinary. And here's the thing, Trigby, I will say both for Harris and Cheney, but more so Harris, just because of what I'm going to say. I can't recall anything that was said by Vice President Harris yesterday in Ripon that would not have been said by Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, or George W. Bush. It was a, it was a speech of American exceptionalism, of, of greatness, of working together to overcome our problems, to be a light around the world, uh, reinforcing her support for Ukraine, which got huge applause from the Democratic crowd yesterday uh, in Ripon. And, and it was a leader, Trigby. It was a leader who said, look, yeah, I have opinions and I, Liz and I aren't always going to see eye to eye. But right now, that's not important because if we don't meet this moment as a coalition of voters, we're not going to have anything left to argue about. I think Trigby uh, froze up again. <laughs> rarely, Trigby is rarely at a loss for words. He has a tough connection out there in uh, in LA. <laughs> there he goes. Honestly, what is wrong with California? I, well, God's sake. I don't know. A power outage. The internet uh, keeps dying. I, I want to get to quick quickly to this last clip. This is a Liz Cheney putting it down there, as we say, where the chickens could get at it in regards to her support for Vice President Harris. That, uh, here in Ripon, the Republican Party was founded. It was founded uh, in a meeting in 1854 in uh, the Little White Schoolhouse. And it was founded by people who were opposed to slavery. It was that Republican Party, the party of Lincoln and Eisenhower, the party of Reagan and Bush. It's that party that I belonged to my entire life. I volunteered on my first presidential campaign. I already told you how old I am, so I'll tell you. In uh, 1976, when I was 10 years old, and I was sealing envelopes for President Ford's re-election campaign, I cast my first vote ever in 1984 for Ronald Reagan. I served in the State Department in both Bush administrations, and I served in the United States House of Representatives for three terms, including as the third highest ranking Republican in House leadership. So, in other words, I was a Republican even before Donald Trump started spray tanning. <laughs> Ronald Reagan conservative. I believe in limited government. I believe in low taxes. I believe in a strong national defense. And I believe that the private sector is the engine of growth of our economy. I believe that the family and not the government is the most important structure in our society. I know that our security and our freedom depend upon a world in which America, with our allies, leads. And above all else, I know that the most conservative of conservative values is fidelity to our Constitution. I tell you, I have never voted for a Democrat. But this year, I am proudly casting my vote for Vice President Kamala Harris. Trigby Olson, what say you? I mean, I think Liz, you know, and there's the power in it, Todd. And you sent me a great text right after we were there. There's the power of what she's saying. I mean, I agree with all of it. It's how I feel. Mm -hmm. She's speaking how people feel. And it's a pretty amazing thing, you know, and, and maybe that gets to part of the energy, too. 
Um, and I've said this before about the Lincoln Project experience, right? Like when we kind of exploded into the American consciousness in 2020, the most amazing part of it for me is somebody who had been around when we were having conversations and it was two or three of us was that feeling of, wow, others felt the way I do yeah. and are willing to stand with you. And I had seen, I'd heard, talked to people around the world who had been fighting for democracy where that had happened. People like Havel and Landsbergis and Walensa. Um, it's that feeling you're not alone it right. is, 100%. is, is what's awesome about it. And, and to see, and, and you've seen this a hundred times, Craig V, but there's a, there's a, when you get people on the campaign trail, they either measure, they don't. And the ease and the comfort, it seemed, between Harris and Cheney. And Cheney seemed just kind of taken aback, like, I can't believe all these people genuinely like what I'm doing. And it was, it was, it was, you can't make this stuff up, Trick V. It's either, it's either there or it isn't. And I, I'm so proud of Cheney. I'm so proud of Harris because they appeal to our better angels. 100%. And Ronald Reagan and John McCain would have been on that stage with her if yeah. they were around. Thanks, Greg. We appreciate it. Safe travels. Go Pack Go. We're going to yep. talk a little Thank Badger you. football with Brady and Brandon. The Ewing and Bro is next right here on the Civic Media Radio Network. I love LA. You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. To this day, when I hear that song, I see you standing there on that long discount shade, store ball team, flip flops, and cut off jeans. Welcome back to the Teleball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is now 34 minutes past the hour of 12 noon on this TGIF edition, October 4th, 2024. It's a picture-perfect day across most of Wisconsin. And I find out now it's a picture-perfect day back at the old hometown. It is homecoming for Richland Center High School. So let's take you there live via the old stream yard across the airwaves. It is Mr. Brady Ewing and his brother Brandon Ewing joining us live from the RC Brady, of course, a three-time Big Ten champion, captain of the team at one point with Russell Wilson and many others. Also spent three years in the NFL and his big brother, a former high school head football and basketball coach in the RC and a guy who likes to give Brady noogies. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, how are you? Doing great. That's how are you, Todd? Uh, fit as a fiddle. Glad to have you along, guys. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful day. Uh, uh, lots to talk about. We you, you guys joined us when we were in down in Monroe a couple weeks ago, and kind enough to come on back together because people have been asking, they've been clamoring. You understand? We love the Ewing Bros together, so we got to have more of this. <laughs> so hey, can I interject here for a second? Todd? Well, of course. Okay, so how were the ratings from our last segments together? Did, up, did you see some up. like? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Todd, come on, man. <laughs> if we only... and I, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we um, uh, got done with the segment um, last or two weeks ago, mm. and I went out and grabbed uh, a pack. We had a package delivered, and so I grabbed the package, and I'm looking at it, and there's a note written on it. And um, our awesome UC UPS driver <laughs> was listening to the segment and, and knew and congr sent me a congratulatory message. For beating Brady and our know your brother segment. <laughs> yeah, so. know, know your bro. And 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 by yeah. just a, uh by a field goal, <laughs> by a field goal as time expired, Brandon beat Brady as time expired. That's our that's our great friend Matt delivering the UPS packages up there in southwest Wisconsin. And a shout out to yeah, all of our, awesome. our great drivers, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, all those people work so very hard. Well, I'm, I'm glad people are listening. And uh, no, I mean, I mean, we always enjoy Brady's been on the show almost since the beginning. But, you know, any chance to get double the dose of Ewing's, I mean, why not? <laughs> we'll take it, even if it's Brandon. Yeah, but, well, I, hey, but, I've been known as more of the hot take artist. Brady's yeah. pretty uh, keen and keel and, you know, just kind of plays the company line. But, but Brandon's isn't... the guy that has all the hot takes. But, but isn't that, I mean, to, to continue with the football analogy, I mean, isn't that, and doesn't that kind of fit the genre here? I mean, Brandon kind of is able to maybe hit the deep pass, you know, once in a while, <laughs> but Brady just keeps grinding it out and scoring touchdowns. So, I mean, it's that you know, fullback mentality, right? You know, he just, the walk-on mentality. Yeah. Brandon's the high flyer firstborn, <laughs> you know, quarterback. Kicker. Quarterback. Right? <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, guys. Well, the old, the old workhorse. Uh, well, you're both fantastic. We love to have you here. All right, let's get to business, boys. Uh, Todd went out to California last week to Los Angeles and went to the USC Badger game. Let me tell you this. It's a great facility. Uh, awesome beach. Our, our friends at Hermosa Beach down there at the – ever get out there, guys? Underground uh, pub. Great sports venue to watch Wisconsin sports, whatever, in the Los Angeles area. And Coliseum, a great place. The USC staff uh, could not have been – nicer to us a couple of takeaways number one if i ever hear the usc fight song again I, i'll go nuts because that's all they play and it drives by the, by the second half i was i was just about ready to lose what little hair i had left secondly <laughs> uh this game in the first half was like oh my gosh this is fantastic and i liked it when i emailed you guys it was kind of like going on to the bars with your friends and you meet that person you think is hot and good looking and all of a sudden they're smiling at you and all of a sudden holy cow they're talking to me and then you're dancing and then you think holy cow i'm going home tonight i'm going to get lucky and then they come up to you and say nice meeting you i'm going home with my friends and then it's just over and you're left high and dry that's what i felt like between the two halves brady uh, last week in california yeah, I mean, I we were actually out at my sister's house for a family get together. My sister from Illinois was in town. We had a little birthday celebration for the family, so I had the game on, watching intermittently, but pleasantly surprised. First half, Brandon was more posted up on the couch than I was. I'll be honest, I was I was playing with the kiddos, so I could throw them under the bus. But from what we saw in the first half, it felt like there was that identity that word everybody's throwing out and i've thrown it out too it felt like there was more of an identity power run game even though they didn't put the quarterback under center and and fourth and short in that situation but it felt like there was more of an identity there and uh came out lackluster in the second half brandon what do, what do you think happened in the second half as they came out and, and tried to transition well okay i look at that um you know we we're up 21 17 right and it's the it's the play that everybody's talking about. The fourth and one, they they go for it instead of kicking the field goal, and um, they they come out in fourth and one in the shotgun. And I, I turned and I look at David Ewing, my father, and I'm like, what are they doing? And um, you know, it's it, it it's exactly right because they ran that play to the right. They pulled the the left and right the left guard and tackle. And it left a, a wide open lane for um, that de defensive end to shoot right after the running back. And it's like, it, it was bound to fail from the start. It was the second like, week in the row, guys. I mean, they did this last yeah. week against Alabama. Everybody's like, okay, fine. Long go made a mistake. And they do it for the second week in a row. And Brady, your former teammate, J.J. Watt, who is now a national analyst with CBS, is, mm -hmm. I, I mean, he's tweeting this out. I, I, I mean, I don't know, guys. Brandon, go ahead. No, yeah. it's, you know, so while we were in it and while it felt great in the first half, I tell you what, that, that was the straw. And from that point on, it, again, it, we, we lost, we lost all momentum. We lost all, you know, feel for the game. And uh, yeah, we went from <laughs> covering the spread to um, <laughs> Being no, spread no, we around the field. winning the game. <laughs> we went from winning the game to basically getting blown out in yeah. a, a matter of a quarter. And it hurt, it sucked. And, you know, we go back to that whole identity, you know, who are we? You know, if right now the Badgers kind of look like a, a mediocre ACC or a big 12 team, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. trying to be something that we're not. Yep. And, you know, I don't want to pile on and it doesn't necessarily feel right, but um, at times it's hard to watch. Yeah, it is. Brady, as a former uh, Badger, spent four years there, of course, went to three Rose Bowls, three Big Ten championships. What about this? Your former teammate, as I said, J.J. Watt, uh, tweeted out a little bit of shade. Braylon Allen, who is now at the Jets, even more so, saying, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially at some point I'm going to go on a podcast and explain what things were like there the last year, meaning last hmm. year. Uh, Should we get him on here? I, 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 <laughs> hey, you got connections, man. Not me. Uh, that would be that would be that would increase. Why don't something to increase our ratings? Get Braylon Allen to give us an exclusive. But what, but yeah, what about this? I mean, what do you what do you think as an alum? This kind of open criticism. I, I mean, to Brandon's point, I think it's just. Yeah, it's interesting. I had a media member from 
the Madison that covers the football team reach out to me the, earlier this week to you know do an article, and he was reaching out to a bunch of former players and. Just with some of the commitments I have, uh, especially with homecoming week and coaching and things like that, it just didn't make sense uh, to do that. And I don't, yeah, there's a, there's a tug and pull there for me personally of, okay, how do I need to be as vocal about that? But no doubt, and I think we talked about this a lot through the transition from Chris to Fickle and this new staff and the way that things have been. I would use the word gutted a little bit at Wisconsin as far as those Wisconsin ties. You know, they, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but all of those Wisconsin ties that Coach Christ had worked so hard to surround himself with, the people that understand, at least historically, in the way that college football in Wisconsin was structured, what would help them have success, they knew what that blueprint was. And, you know, that was all taken away with the fickle transition. And, you know, whether that was intentional or not, I think is up for debate. Um, but, yeah, I, I do say as an alumni and what drew me to the program as a walk-on with the walk-on history that was there, you know, being from the state of Wisconsin, being a Badger fan, and then the ties and connection I had and the personal relationships with Chris, you know, Bo Stead, you, I could the list could go on and on with guys that um, I had history, Bielema yeah. had history with at Wisconsin, and they had history with Wisconsin. Yeah, You know, Coach Rudolph is another one. Um, you know, played there as well. So um, with that leaving, I guess some of, you know, I still love Wisconsin. I'm still all in on Wisconsin. Don't, don't get me wrong there, but um, there is a little bit of that personal element now where it's, you don't feel as connected to things um, as an alumni, or at least I don't. Guys, give me a uh, 30 seconds if you can, each of you, Brandon, then Brady. Uh, can Wisconsin get a win this weekend against Purdue? And if so, how Brandon? Yeah, I mean, absolutely they can get a win. Um, but I think they need to get and embrace who they are, okay? I, and I don't care which direction that they go. But if they're going to be a spread and, and you know, throw it all over the place, do that, okay? If they want to be power, be power, okay? But go out and just be – have an identity. Have an identity. Be, be who we are. Yeah. Uh, Zomers, dial up, uh, dial up some on Wisconsin for me. Uh, in the meantime, Brady, go ahead. Yeah, I think they can, and we should go back and revisit our our projections at the beginning of the season. Todd, Let's not. I think <laughs> I think I'm still trending pretty good. You, uh, you I'm are. well predicted, but uh, yeah, um, I mean, the only thing you got wrong so far was uh, Alabama. And the only thing I've got wrong so far is uh, USC, and we bo- I think we both predicted they win this weekend against uh, Purdue. Yeah, and so I'm saying they're still going to do that. I mm-hmm. think they continue to learn. Um, I think. Longo continues to learn on what can help be success from an offensive perspective. And, um, yeah, for, I think it's a home game, right? Yes, it is. I'm going. My, my, my little sister, Heather's coming down. We're going to go to the game. Where you, Rob Wheat, our, my friend, uh, he's a uh, guy can't go. He says, can you and Heather go? So, uh, thanks to Rob, we're going to the game. Which brings us, awesome. Zombers, hit the mute. We we gotta change things up, guys. We gotta we gotta uh, <laughs> change the the juju here. Go on. We gotta burn some sage. No, hit the music. We're taking it out of the closet. It rarely comes out. <laughs> this is for good luck. It's the Brady oh, Ewing yeah. oh, Rose Brady Bowl jersey. jersey of 2012. That is going on. This is gonna change things. <laughs> it rarely gets used anymore. It hangs in my apartment. Here we go. Before he there, did it, I was going to say, you know, Todd, do I recommend taking off it's your gonna, headphones. It's going to bring us luck. We're going to change things around. Done. Love it. Number 34. Ready to go. It's changing. It's hey, changing. next break, we're playing jump around. All right, very good. Zombers, <laughs> Zombers will be all over that. All right, guys, hey, a couple. Todd? Yeah, go ahead. Did, did it feel like a Big Ten game? Um, great question. And I'll say, I mean, the Cal- I've never been there. I've been to the Rose Bowl uh, three times uh, for Rose before Rose Bowls. Um a different feel, not as picturesque maybe as the Rose Bowl, but but really cool. I will say this: I don't like their scoreboards because, unlike Wisconsin, where where you could always see like what down it is and everything, the whole LED screen changes the video. So a lot of the times, all you're seeing is replays or whatever, and you're like, wait a minute, what yard line are we on or whatever? So I didn't like that so much. But it's it's a cool historic stadium. There's uh, we learned that it was uh, built in honor of World War One veterans, so much like mm-hmm. Camp Randall has a, a history of veterans with Civil War Memorial Coliseum in L.A. is connected to World War One veterans, so that was really cool. Uh, and the fans were all really super. Well, there were a couple. They're always all right, uh, but for the most mm-hmm. part, the fans were fantastic. It's a cool venue. If you ever get out there to to watch a game, uh, do it. 
Did it feel like a Big Ten game? Um, they made a big deal about it. Their fans seemed kind of excited by it. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's different. It's I mean, it's different yeah. when you're watching the Badgers play and there's palm trees and it's not for a Rose Bowl or a bowl game. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, this is a regular yeah. season game now. But, uh, but it was fun. I, I'd encourage people to go out and check it out. Cool. So there you go. Um, really quickly, quickly, guys, in hour number two, very excited to have, uh, always excited to have you guys, but also excited in hour two, we're going to be talking to Ian O'Connor, uh, author of this new book on Aaron Rodgers called Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. Have either one of you guys read it? Not yet. I it's on my to-read list. but I, I, I haven't gotten to, uh, through it entirely. I want to come back, and I want to ask both of you, but I'm going to ask Brady first, as a former professional athlete spent three years in the NFL. One of the things kind of going through this book so far is all these, the, the mystery part of it is Aaron Rodgers' life. And he's kind of, you know, he never really gives a, a, a straightforward answer on a lot of things. It's always kind of, you know, veiled and mysterious. And, and he goes on Pat McAfee and kind of says some outrageous stuff. But the question to you, Brady, well, to both of you is once you go professional, are you signing away your privacy do you just expect as a as a as a pro athlete to give up some privacy, or are pro athletes people too? We'll ask Brady Ewing and Brandon <laughs> Ewing, the Ewing Bros. Don't go anywhere. It's a Friday edition TGIF the All Ball Show right here on the Civic Media and Ewing Radio Network. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tallable Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. The camp will be jumping around at the end of the third quarter. The students better be there by then. It's an early game, though, guys. It's an early and 11 o'clocker. I don't know. What do you got? Oh, you can do it. Well, I will. do it. I will. Hey, cause I, cause I'm old. Go ahead. Yeah. They sell beer there now. They have I know, no excuse. right? Right? <laughs> I will say this. I know, Brady, we talked about it on the show before. I went to a couple, three uh, basketball games last season after they started selling beer. I'll tell you, more students were there. And, and nobody got out of control. And uh, I've been to, uh, I guess, what? One game at the camp so far, and I don't know. It seems to help a little bit. What do you think? I haven't been to one with it, but it's not going to hurt anything from a revenue perspective for <laughs> right. the school or getting you know students in the in in the stands. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, well, I look at when I used to in my college <laughs> days go to all those games, and you know we would do. Uh, you know, beer for breakfast and you Creative know, try to get there. <laughs> yeah. Try to get there by uh, the third quarter. Don't worry. Um, the, the statute of limitations no. is expired. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank goodness. But yeah, it's, I, I actually think that it's great. And, um, yeah. you know, hear, hearing the, the pallets worth of beer and alcoholic <laughs> beverages that they brought in prior That's to crazy. this football season, um, it's it, uh, pretty shocking. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's making the money at the old athletic department. Uh, all right, and we oh, talked yeah. in, in hour two. We got Ian O'Connor, this new book on Aaron Rodgers, Out of the Darkness, Brady, and then Brandon. Brady, as a former professional athlete who spent uh, three years in the NFL, of course, is different in all kinds of ways from being a college athlete. But mm -hmm. in, in your opinion, in your experience in the NFL, do you, do you or I give your own perspective or people around you, do you think the professional athletes at some level just say, okay, I have this opportunity that a lot of people don't get. I'm going to sign the contract. And do you just know and anticipate you're going to lose some of that privacy in your personal life? Or do you think that you're still entitled to that? Um, I mean, of course, I think you're entitled to it, but at some regard you're signing up for it. It's a platform that has pros and cons. So there's things that, are amazing about that. You get to play a sport for your occupation. You get a chance to do something that you love or you grew up probably likely dreaming of, at least for myself, I can say that. Mm -hmm. And with that comes some challenges, but there's so much good that comes from that platform too. You know, the ability to, uh, you know, reach different audiences and a lot, you see a lot of guys using that for good, but mm -hmm. 
Um, with that, I, a lot of the people that I saw, their circle starts to shrink down, especially the big, the big people that, you know, are, you know, starting quarterbacks or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, their, their circle really shrinks down because you don't know what people's motivations are, whether that is a long lost relative or somebody from your hometown or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and, and I hate, I hate to say it, but people start putting their walls up and, you know, I look at myself, you know, Brandon mentioned it earlier when you're speaking to media stuff, I think Todd, we've gotten a pretty free flowing conversation going here in the past year, however long we've been doing it. But in the media, I mean, I, you, you pretty much say, you look at what coach Chris, the way he talked to the media, right? He just gave you the, the most yeah. blanket answers. And like that was his personality too, to a certain extent. And, and, and mine is mine, but um, yeah, you end up kind of giving vanilla generic answers because you don't want to step too far outside the box. Brandon, let me ask it to you in a different way. As a family member, as an older brother of someone who played in the college level and then the NFL, does it just hit differently when you hear people critiquing the team uh, or the players knowing that it's your brother? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, I look at when Brady was drafted and, um, you know, from day one, seeing some of the Falcons message boards about why would they take a fullback in the fifth round, you know, to, um, man, this guy can't, he, he can catch the ball, he can play pretty well, but he can't stay healthy, you know, and there's, you know, from a family member, um, from somebody that cares pretty deeply, it, uh, you know, yeah, it hits a little different and it hurts a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I, I look at, like, I think it was, wasn't it Charles Barkley that said, I am not a role model, yeah. you know, and then they had that whole marketing campaign centered around that. And it's like, why, why are we holding athletes to, yes, we, they should be held to a higher standard. Yes. People are always going to look up to them, but should we? You know, mm -hmm. it, it, why, why don't but, we do the same with teachers? <laughs> yeah, to totally agree with that. Um, unfortunately, we have a couple minutes left here, but but quickly, each of you, um, I don't want to go too far into politics, but we were talking about Harris and, and, and Cheney having this joint uh, uh, political rally yesterday in Ripon, and the fact that it seemed to bring people together and it allowed people to believe in something bigger than themselves and be part of a team. And is that part of it, Brady, that, that we as fans are like, my life might suck. I don't have money. My cars be whatever it might be. And it's like for a mm. moment, for three hours, I can believe in something else. And that becomes, I don't want to say our religion, but it becomes our venue. And we hold you guys up as holier than thou and then are disappointed when you're not gods and perfect. Right. And I think that that's 100% true. I mean, I can, growing up when I spoke about the Badgers team, this is before I even played for them or the Packers in that regard, it was always we. It wasn't the Badgers. It wasn't mm. them. It was we, so you do feel a connection. You know, I look at guys like Luke Swan or Jim Leonard that kind of paved the way, or Chris Maragos paved the way for me as a Wisconsin walk-on to mm -hmm. come into the program. Um, you know, those are guys that I looked up to. And mm -hmm. so no doubt it's uh, with that platform comes responsibility because people are watching, but there's, you know, typically we see the negative from that and there's so much good going on out there. Brandon, 30 seconds is yours. Yeah, no, I, I look at Brett Favre, okay, the guys I looked up to growing up, Brett Favre, okay, loved his childish ambition, the gunslinging, at, you know, but he was flawed. He was very flawed. I look at Roger, same thing, very flawed, you know, these guys are, are special, but um, yeah, it's it's just something that, that we have to work through. Brandon Ewing, Brady Ewing, always a pleasure, guys. Let's jump around, get the Badgers a win tomorrow at the camp. Thank you, gentlemen. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Tom. Back Thanks, with Hour 2 on the Civic Media Radio Network. Stay tuned. We have Sean Hannish and Ed O'Connor next. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about.